Simmons back. Hey guys, just finished watching Black Lightning, Season 2, Episode 11, The Book of Secrets, Chapter 1, Prodigal Son. Um, this episode was kind of interesting dealing with the, obviously, spoilers, obviously, um, dealing with the, the death of Khalil in this episode. I think that was really interesting. Um, we see, uh, start off the episode with Khalil, with Khalil, like, spend the whole episode pretty much in the hospital with Khalil, um, dying and stuff. And I think that was kind of really interesting dealing with that. I like the way they did that very much was a more personal episode. Um, I really like the way they kind of do this show a little bit. There was the form of still storytelling sometimes. Sometimes the stories are just like not as good. You can still, it still feels like a CW show a little bit. Um, but they've, they really, I really like the way they do this show a little bit more because it's less villain of the week. It's less filler episodes. It's more um, dealing with the, the kind of season long storyline and the season and the stories are, are always shorter episodes, short, shorter seasons. And so the short, the, the story always moves forward kind of, kind of fast. I like that. So we start off this episode with Khalil straight up asking, uh, you know, Jefferson that he wants Black Lightning to, to kill Tobias and Jefferson straight up says, no, I can't do that. He's like, well, at least make him suffer for me like I have. And he's like, yeah, for sure. So I think that's going to be interesting to see deal with that, you know. Um, that was a really cool moment between the two of them there. That was kind of cool there. Um, we see Jennifer, she, she kind of burns a woman's car down after the woman kind of um, is like, you know, calls the police on her. And I don't understand how she kind of doesn't, you know, she's heard of powered people out there like Black Lightning, Thunder, um, and, and the Green Light give, causing people to have powers and stuff. Um, so it's, I don't understand how she didn't, she blamed her for trying to steal the car, even though she was just kind of leaning over the car as if she was injured or whatnot, and she's outside of a hospital. Um, so that whole scene was just kind of a bit weird. I get the way, what they're trying to do with that whole thing and stuff, but it just looked a bit weird because would really a person like blame her, like suspect her of doing that? Because she clearly wasn't doing it, and anyone around her would would have just would have um, corroborated and checking the security cameras outside of a hospital would have corroborated her story. And you know, even if then when the car lit on fire, she would I don't see why a person who's that kind of irrational and just kind of jumping to the conclusions would have came to the conclusion that yeah, you burnt my you blew up my car because. You might have powers. Those things just exist in this town, and there have been people with powers. So, um, you know, I just think that it could. She could have blamed her for putting a bomb underneath the car. She could have blamed her for all kinds of stuff. And it was just kind of a weird scene as to where the way things go with that. And she was on the phone with nine one one for someone stealing her car. Then all of a sudden, you know, she's like, she stops halfway. Oh, my car's on fire. It's blown up. You know, and the nine one one operator never kind of went whoa something someone's stealing your car and never continued that storyline like it just that kind of conversation so she must have reported to the police they must have been somewhere in a police report that someone was trying to steal her car uh you know so i just it's kind of a weird situation i get what they were trying to do with that but it just didn't really go anywhere and it was just like why you know now if jennifer had you know later on had uh you know shorted out her phone or something i think that would have been an interesting idea um you know the the idea that her powers are going out maybe she's about to call 911 for some silly reason and you know she just uses her powers to to stop that and just kind of shorts out the phone um and that sets off her powers i understand she they had to have her use her powers so that her powers would go off and then she wouldn't be able to control her powers once she turned them back on right she wouldn't be able to turn them off type thing and i get that idea but she could have you know like i said just st do the phone or she could have maybe not blown up the car type thing just kind of um which was really cool like seeing her do that maybe just kind of uh you know st she kind of zaps the battery from without anything so it's can't start type thing and then the woman tries to start her car and nothing happens uh and just it just the whole situation there was just kind of like it's just this piece is missing and it just didn't it wasn't really thought out as to why because you know that that whole situation should have ended with uh with jennifer uh at the police station even if she was wrongfully accused and all that stuff but the whole situation there should have ended with her in the police station and then you know henderson uses his power to get her out type thing and just figures the whole thing out and everything gets and you know she gets the other person gets blamed for you know um for miss uh community and maybe maybe uh, henderson says don't blow up cars type thing and he you know admits that she actually can blow up cars from with her lightning powers from the police report so that's the way it should have gone but it was kind of a weird scene there um we see end up cutter end up killing the reverend she was using some sort of poison handkerchief that was kind of interesting there um we see jefferson he can't really absorb the energy too much from 
from uh, Jennifer. So that was an interesting idea. She's emitting too much energy, and that was kind of cool there. So Pina, or Piranha, has to show up, or Purina, um, the girl who is able to kind of teach her, who's been training uh, Jennifer with their powers. And she, you know, she's kind of floating there, and she's able to bring everything and, and absorb stuff. And I think that was kind of cool, seeing her slowly learning to use her powers. And she uses them, but then they're out of control, and then she uses them. So I like the way they're doing that. It's not like she's just kind of gone for... You know, controlling them and not controlling them. It's like so. I think it's kind of um, a very slow burn is how she's able to kind of, kind of control. And they go out of control. And there's no. It's not really linear. If you were to look at it as a graph, it would just be kind of all over the place. Of you know, where she's have how she's kind of slowly moving to controlling her powers and stuff. And I think that's really interesting um, to see as to where things go. And if not mistaken, we do have a, an official photo out there of her in costume, which I don't know why they keep doing that, revealing that so early. It just kind of drives me crazy. It's annoying because, uh, you know, I think what they should do is just let, fo if set photos are going to come out of, of the care of the person in costume, just let them come out. P people who don't want spoilers will avoid set photos because those are always super spoiler heavy. Um, but yet official photos are never, sp are not spoiler heavy because it's officially released, right? They're controlling spoilers. But um, I just wish they hadn't re revealed that so that, uh, you know, it wouldn't be known that, oh, she's going to get her costume and it would be a surprise whenever it does. So we see that happen. We see Je Jefferson ends up bringing Henderson um, to the tailor shop that Gamby works at, and he straight up and then Gamby asks, says that you know that the Reverend's been poisoned and stuff. He had a body examined, and Henderson's like, "How? How the hell did you be able to do that? It takes us weeks to do that." And he's like, "I have people," and that's what pisses me off with Gamby is that he's always the Swiss Army knife, the answers to every problem and all that stuff, and. You know, if he was Alfred, then that makes sense because Bruce Wayne's a billionaire. He has people, he has money, he's a way, way to do stuff. Awesome. Um, but like Gamby, we never see him working at the, at, this, at the shop. He always has way too much money. Like his, he clearly has way too much money on his hands. What was he paid a million dollars, ten million dollars a year at the, at the ASA for a couple of years, and he's just saved up. Uh, you know, however many many years he worked at uh, at the ASA, and you know he has like a ton of money in the bank to afford all this stuff. No, it doesn't make sense as to how he did that. Did he bribe the person? Did he? Does he actually have connections? Did he knows people? And what are they getting out of? How are they risking? Uh, you know, risking like contaminating it with a body and losing risking their job like you know like there's just so many questions as to how does he do all this stuff it just drives me crazy there's never an answer he just has an answer for everything and then it doesn't make any sense he just he just does he just has all these skills for no reason um you know he's keeps he has this the, this part this shop open and i'm assuming unless he owns the building um that you know he there must be paying rent or paying some sort of fees and there must be people going coming at him saying like why are you not making any money as a business you know um it's just kind of all over their place uh it just kind of doesn't make sense as to any of the thing that can be does we see tobias into breaking jace the uh doctor who was uh, the, 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 the ex-doctor who was in prison who uh, was out to help Lynn with the pods and then put it back into prison. So she sends Todd to break her out of prison and we see Khalil dies and everyone's there. So that was really interesting, nice little ending to Khalil there um, when uh, Jennifer and him got to have like a prom type thing in the uh, uh, in the school. And they weren't, didn't really go to prom, they just kind of walk into the doors. I kind of like that rather than just kind of a long like sappy like prom dance and stuff they didn't want to waste time with that instead they dealt they put more time into everyone grieving that he's gone type thing and in the hospital room and i think that was a really good moment uh it was really good you know, the, way, the way they did that that was a kind of uh cool i feel like they probably did have a dance at some point in the script they probably cut, cut it out but i think it was really a good choice of doing that i like the way they kind of played with that and his death was definitely uh, going to be an interesting one i think it was a great um, it was well acted by everyone in this scene. It was just a great scene, even though not much was going on. So that was pretty cool. And then we end the episode with Tobias and his crew, um, just kind of going into to after the, the pods kids with the doctor, which was kind of weird. So we have Tobias, he breaks down this door, you know, this, this cement wall with the jackhammer, right? With his super strength. And then there's another door there with a secret access code. And this evil, oh, this this doctor who's been put in prison there still has access to that. They wouldn't have changed the codes and stuff, the new codes. I mean, yeah, they put the wall there so that, as if to, to completely bury it. You know, they put a cement wall there and all that stuff. I get that. But still, wouldn't you, you know, I don't know, deactivate the electronics in that, in that setup, not have power running to it? Because 
uh, if you're if they cemented off the wall and they completely blocked off the wall because it's never going to be touched to your again, in they're never talking about it and it's completely blocked off then they'd cut the power to that because they don't want to add that to their electricity bill right so it doesn't make sense as to why that was really active and even if they left it active for some silly reason uh, they would probably wipe the codes and just put brand new codes or one more code uh, and you know maybe if it's so sensitive and stuff in there they'd probably also have it set up so that if anyone ever tried to go try to access it the whoever's in charge of it whoever knows about it, whoever blocked the wall would instantly get notified someone's accessing this you know and the evil doctors the the ex the criminal doctor there what is it what is her name joyce uh helga jace wouldn't her her codes would totally be outdated it would never work so that was just kind of silly um they could have just had tobias to answer all those questions have it all turned off like a next thing and he just puts his hand in there and just sort of rips it open you know hits it once with the hits it a few times with the with the, the hammer and then kind of just prize it open with his super strength that would have made more sense or you could get todd to just plug his stuff in and add power to it and you know to, uh, to hack it open you know because there's there there well if, if he could hack it open if there was no power he wouldn't be able to hack it open but seeing tobias just gonna break it open with his hands would have been a lot cooler made more sense than her putting in passwords that should be deleted so that was kind of a bit weird at the end there um some inconsistent stuff there that didn't really make sense but uh, overall, this episode was kind of a nice episode, bit of a slower episode, um, but it looks like the next episode is going to be a bit heavier with um, Jennifer going for revenge instead of, uh, and you know, revenge as justice and stuff. And I kind of like that. That's going to be really cool to see as to where things go with that and how, you know, hopefully, yeah, he's raising her and stuff, but I think it would be cool to, for him to, for her to have her different versions of stuff and keeping... You know, that's what the different things that I like to see about when superheroes collide is the different uh, perspectives of justice, you know. You have Superman's perspective of justice, you have Batman's perspective of justice, and you have the Punisher's perspective of justice, you know. I like seeing the different grays uh, and color, shades of gray, shades of black and white of uh, justice that different people, that, you know, say and stuff. And yeah, she's going to have somewhat similar to stuff like that, but she might have a little bit different versions uh you know because they're all like family and she's being raised by jefferson and lynn so she's gonna have someone to make sure the two it's gonna be interesting to see as to how much where, where where things go with that and hopefully jennifer you know comes out with her own sense of justice and not exact copy of you know her father's sense of justice right so i think that could be really cool for uh, for the next episode to seeing that so all in all, I can't wait to see as to where things go for this in the next episode. So let me know what you think, guys, about this episode in the comments below, Season 2, Episode 11. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. I'm Captain America, here to talk to you about one of the most valuable traits a soldier or student can have. Subscribing. Sometimes subscribing. This is the key to victory. Sometimes it leads to very little, and it seems like it's not worth it. And you wonder why you waited so long for something so disappointing. How many more of these? You're still here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Peace. It's over.